on today's episode. Hey, look at this, eh? This is the beautiful and sexy Dynam A10 Warthog or Thunderbolt. The reason I say uh, beautiful and sexy is in homage to my friends, uh, the Petricnic brothers in Slovenia. Fantastic channel. Check them out up there. Hugely entertaining channel. Much better than this one. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at the assembly. It's not really a build. Most of the building has been done at the factory of this A10 model. A couple of departures for me, some new things. Firstly, I mean, look at these suckers. That's one of the eternal questions. Uh, do they suck or do they blow? These guys, twin 64mm EDF fans, controlled by 240 amp speed controllers. All this is supplied and cabled up at the factory. The other new thing for me is that this will be the first model that I have with retractable undercarriage. The retracts you can see there. And again, pretty much everything has been done at the factory to get us going. Additionally, in the box, we have some glue supplied, although I think I'm going to be using hot melt glue for most of what I need. The rest of the control linkages and such like in there. And as well as the, the canopy, there's even a very brave little pilot hanging on in there. I've got my instructions ready. Let's proceed now with the assembly and I'll point out any difficulties that I have and the way I resolve them. One of the first jobs then is to glue the engine nacelles to the main fuselage. I've hooked up the wires for the brushless motors and I've checked that they're rotating in the correct direction. It's just possible to pass the speed controllers through the hole here into the fuselage so you don't need to disassemble that or, or fish around. That's quite a good arrangement. What I don't like though is gluing directly to the paint. I don't think that's going to give a, the best uh, adhesion, should we say. What I've done then is to, with a piece of glass paper, just take the paint off and I've just taken it off half of it there to, to show you. And I'll carry on and do that and then glue the whole thing in place with my EPO glue of choice being the Yoohoo Pour. Ah, by the way, there is this servo lead passing through here for the elevator, I believe, and I've double checked with my servo tester that that is in its centered position. Obviously, it's going to be difficult to get to that cable after the assembly of the nacelles, so just check that that servo is working and centered. With the engine nacelles firmly glued in place now, I have attached the vertical parts of the stabilizer, making sure that that's at 90 degrees, and I've just used hot melt glue to put those on. The next job, screw the horizontal stabilizer in place, screws provided. I've attached the linkage to the center position on the servo horn there, and glued this onto the part of the elevator there. When checking that the elevator was free, I noticed that they'd gone a bit mad with the hot melt glue, and that is actually preventing the elevator from moving downwards. It's upwards is not too bad. What I need to do is to cut off this excess glue here so that that will move more freely. When checking the aileron servos, I found a problem, and it's obviously much better to find a problem right now rather than connecting up the receiver and perhaps getting confused. What I see is that although I'm connected to the Y cable, only one of the ailerons is actually moving. However, if I touch the Y cable connector here, I can get the other aileron to move. Clearly there is a, an issue with that Y connection that they've made up here, maybe a cold solder joint or something. The next thing I'm going to do is to take a closer look at that and make sure that that problem is fixed. It seemed to me on this connection that the signal wire was okay, but it would have been one of the power connections as the servo was going on and off. This is the negative. Let's take a look at what 
goes on under here. That appears to be okay. Let's take a look at the positive. That joint doesn't look quite so clever, but uh, I'm not seeing that it's actually broken. Maybe it is the signal wire after all. Let's take a look at under here. Yes, I believe we have found our culprit. It was in fact the signal wire. You can clearly see that it's soldered to the bottom there. But you can see the chamfer there, which is the end of that connection. And indeed, we can separate the two. So my initial suspicions were incorrect. It was in fact the signal wire. I shall get that resoldered. And I think what I'll do is to cover it all in some hot melt glue, which will provide insulation and also some support for the wires. And I'm really glad that we found that at this point in the game and not when we're flying around. Now then, the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time to spin these puppies up and see how much current they're going to draw. For this exercise, I've invested in a couple of these graphene Turnigy batteries. These are supposed to be particularly good and they're nice and low, around about two or three milliohms. Let's see how much juice we can suck out of them. One thing before we start is I wasn't happy with the way that they'd wired both of the UBEX together from the speed controllers. As far as I'm aware, you're only supposed to power the receiver from one what I've done then is to take the 5 volt wire out of one of the ESCs and just taped it back there in case I need it in the future. There is only one UBEC that will be powering the system. Safety squints on then. Here goes nothing. Madre mia, what did we get up to then? 439 watts, 37.9 amps. That's uh, definitely a, a moving experience and it blew the box behind me across the room. So I think we have sufficient thrust there. Now it's time to think about what receiver I'm going to use. Having the iRange X module in my transmitter gives me the ability to choose practically any receiver that I like. On the FR Sky side, I quite like this guy. Um, my thinking is that I really need to put something in here with a gyro. Flying this model is way beyond my meager capabilities. If I'm to have any chance of flying it at all, I think I'm going to have to put a gyro on it. So the FR Sky is one option. Another option is to go the Spectrum route uh, with the AS3X. Now I really like the AS3X functionality. I have that on a few of my models, particularly on the, on the Ultrix, which is just an amazing little aircraft. So I'm tending towards using this. Either one is going to be a bit of a handful to set up the, the gyros on. I've heard nightmares about both of them. However, I think I'm going to have more of a chance with the Spectrum. Uh, if you have any particular comments or experience with either of these receivers, then please leave me a, a comment down below. But for the moment, we're going to go ahead with this guy. Let's get him connected up, and then we can check on our servo movements and the retracts. Here we are then, just lashed up for the moment with the AS3X receiver there. Okay, let's check the ailerons. That's good. Elevator. That's going the right way as well. There is no rudder on here, but the nose wheel is steerable, so that is on channel 4. Obviously the landing gear is up at the moment. Let's now then 
see how that works. So that's fairly neat, and so on the rudder, see the nose wheel turning there. And that looks very scary indeed. Uh, dare we throttle up? Throttle active. Yeah, she's certainly she's certainly keen to get into the air there. Throttle disabled. And that will be a very exciting day indeed, and hopefully not too far in the future. Thanks for watching.